I'm going to tell you guys three stories. Then I'm going to ask for a favor. If I, do, if I do really well with these stories, the favor is going to be so fun. First story. There was this homeless man who had a t-shirt that said, world's greatest runner. That story behind the t-shirt is both funny, sweet, and sad. You see, he got that shirt because his wife and son saw him working his butt off to win his first marathon. He was so excited. But he ranked last in the marathon. See, they thought that he was going to do so well because he was working out so hard. They thought he was going to do well, so they got him the shirt because they knew his dad was going to win. So the son being very, very sweet and smart, he said, I know a way to lift dad's spirits. We're going to give him the shirt anyway, and what we're going to say is, dad, to us, you're our world. So you are the world's greatest runner. Aw. The sad part. That shirt just happened to be the last gift that he got from his wife and son. Because not too long after that, they both died in a tragic car accident. Their deaths led him on a journey of multiple suicide attempts, depression, alcoholism, drug addiction, and eventual homelessness. See, he was in that park. That same park is a park where he ran that marathon. So while he was there, he, he likes to go there to sip his water and jog just to have those memories of his family again. Well, that day was a unique day. Coming out of nowhere was this 20-year-old multimillionaire who just likes to stay in shape. And in between meetings, he likes to do a little jog. And he, he ran next to this homeless man with this shirt on that says, world's greatest runner. Now, this 20-some-odd old multimillionaire was pretty arrogant and competitive. And he looks at this man and says, how dare you have on this shirt? Do, do you know who I am? I have multiple national championships, multiple state championships, and I hold a college record for long distance running. How dare you have on the world's greatest runner t-shirt? You know what? You know what, sir? I'll race you for that shirt. And a homeless man said, well, if you win, you get my shirt. But what do I get if, if I win? He, the young man knew. He was like, there's no way in the world I could lose to this homeless guy. Come on now, really? He's old. He's homeless. He's all tattered. Wh whatever you want in the world, I got money. I can give you anything you want in the world. What do you want? The homeless man said, well, if, if possible, maybe I could stay in a, you know, a nice hotel for the day and, and, and maybe get some food that doesn't come out of a garbage. Is that possible? He says, you know what? I own a penthouse that I don't even sleep in. I'll let you stay in there for a whole day, a whole year. As a matter of fact, you can stay in there for the rest of your life because he knows he's not going to lose. He says, you know what? I own all the restaurants in the entire city block. So you can eat wherever you want for however long you want. And you know what? I'll give you a million dollars. Get some, somebody record this so that way you can see it. This is all that I'm saying. This is fact. Proof. Now, can we race? And the old homeless man says, yes, but I just, need, I just need to ask for one thing. He was like, oh, what you want? What you want a head start? Of course, I'll give you a head start. He says, no, 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 I don't want a head start. All I want you to do is to let me decide the finish line. The young man says, of course, all right, cool. Yeah, yeah, we can do that. They said, ready, set, go. Boom, young man speeds off. He's going, just pushing it. The old man is trotting next to him. It's for as long as he can, and he just goes far off. But the old man just drinks his water and keeps a steady pace. All of a sudden, the young man looks back and notices that the homeless man is still far behind him, so he runs a little further ahead. An hour passes by. The young man's getting a little tired. Then he looks back, and he can't see the old man anymore. So while exhausted and the sun beating on him, he, he, he runs back to him, and he says, hey, um, how much longer do we have um, until to, to the finish line? And the homeless man running and sipping his water says, I will let you know when the finish line arrives. The, the young man speeds ahead again. The sun's beating him up even more. Now he's really tired and he's getting a little disillusioned. And then he runs back to the homeless man. He says, listen, man, how much, how much further do we have to go until 
to the, the, to the, to the finish line. And, and can I have some of your water? I, I, didn't, I didn't expect to run this long today. Uh, can I have some of your water? And, and the homeless man said, I actually just ran out of water, but I'll let you know when the finish line is, is done. And then the young man, he keeps running and keeps running, and then out of nowhere, he falls. And the homeless man takes five steps ahead of him and says, this is the finish line. And he wins. See, this story represents many places and many, many parts of your life that you've been and you've been a victim of. Allowing somebody else to dictate your finish line because in our life we meet so many times where we are caught up in this idea that somebody can tell us the requirements for greatness. Somebody can tell us or give us permission to be great. Somebody can tell us that we fit the description of everything that we want to be in life. And we believe them. They dictate our finish line for us. They tell you that you're not pretty enough, that you're not tall enough, that you're not light enough, that you're not dark enough, you're not smart enough, you don't meet the requirements, so then you feel defeated because you let somebody else dictate your finish line. But I've come here to tell you a secret, that you are the sole owner of your finish line. There's not anybody in the world that's qualified enough to tell you when you win. Because the moment that you give that power up to somebody else, what you've effectively done is let yourself know that you will never reach greatness. You're sitting in this room right now because you own the keys to drive yourself to wherever you need to go in this world. But the moment you give it away to somebody else in hopes that they will love you better, they will treat you better, they will treat your future better, you fail yourself. Second story. This is actually a poem, an augmented version of a poem that my mentor, Donald Cleveland, from the Florida African American Student Association told me. And it goes like this. There was these three young men. They were 10 years old, and they were walking to their reunion spot. And as they walked into their reunion spot, they saw this old man building a bridge over where the shortcut used to be. But the shortcut, people stopped taking the shortcut because they had all these needles, these broken bottles, these glass shards. It was, it was just hazardous. So they didn't take the shortcut anymore. They took the long way around. And, and one of the, the young men, he was... He was really rude, and he saw the old man building this bridge, and he stopped everybody. He said, hey, look at this stupid old man building this bridge. He says, hey, 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 stupid old man. <laughs> hey, why are you building that bridge, man? What are you doing? Oh, you ain't going to talk to me? Hey, you know, you, 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 you did a good job of building the bridge, but you don't build so much of it, your old self can't even walk back there. Hey, look how further you got to go. You ain't even going to be able to finish before you die. Oh, so you going to ignore me? Well, I hope you die, old man. Let's go. And one, one of his friends just followed right behind him. He didn't say anything. And one friend wanted to say something, but he stopped and just kept going. Ten years passed. They're having another reunion, and now they're 20 years old, and they go to that same spot, and they see this, that same old man, and, and a rude one stops everybody. Says, hey, stop, stop, stop. Is that the same old man from 10 years ago? Wow, he did a good job on that bridge. He still got far to go, but man, he did a lot. Hey, hey, old man, what's up, bro? Oh, you, oh, you still gonna ignore me, man? I'm just trying to be nice to you, man. Look, you did a good job. Look at this bridge, man. Hey, you did a good job, bravo. But I just wanna let you know, man. Look how much further you got to go. You're gonna be dead by the time you even get over there. And then if you do finish it, you're gonna be able to make it all the way back. Oh, so you ignore me? Whatever, stupid old man, y'all, let's go. And, and one of his friends, he just followed behind. He didn't say anything. And the one that wanted to say something the first time around, he stopped. And he said, excuse me, sir. You just ignore him. He's just been like that since he was a kid. But I, I do want to ask, not, not to give him any credit. I just want to know, why? Why are you building this bridge? I mean, we don't mind taking a long way around. And we, we know how hazardous hazardous that, that, that shortcut is, and we would rather take it, but we already just decided the long way is much better than dealing with all that stuff over there. So, so why are you building that bridge? And the old man looked up at him. He said, you see, I'm not building this bridge for me. I know I'm too old to be able to make it all the way back, finish it, and walk across it myself so it ain't about me. You see, I'm building this bridge for the those who are going to come after me because I want them one day to not have to deal with all the struggle, all the evil, all the hazardous things that exist in the world. I want them to know 
that somebody sacrificed themselves so that way they wouldn't have to take the long way around their entire lives. And he picked up a brick and he tried to put cement on that brick to continue to build on that bridge. And then that old man died right there. And that young man who spoke to him, he stopped what he was doing. And he picked up that brick and got that cement and started building that bridge himself. So in that story, I need you all to do me a favor and answer this for yourselves. What of the three are you? Are you the type of person that spends their days making fun of the people who are bridge builders, people who are trying to make the world better? Are you those people who are just making fun of them? Or are you those people who are silent? When somebody else makes fun of the people who are trying to make the world better, you're that person who just goes along with the flow and you just keep moseying on along. Or are you that last person? Are you that bridge builder? Are you right now ready to dedicate yourself to making sure that the world is better than it is right now for people that you may never ever see? Which one are you? Because you have a choice. You see, many of us came into this world and we didn't have everything we needed. But we started building it for somebody else who may never even know that you did it for them. But you know, at the end of the day, that you had to do it because maybe nobody else was going to. Maybe you are a bridge builder. And you have to make that choice because if you don't, maybe there's a future, a future son or daughter of yours or a grandson, daughter or grandson that won't be able to benefit from that bridge that was built. So my last story is a very unique story. I have a, a nephew named KJ. He calls himself Little X. One day we were in my garage. We were looking for a tool. And I had the flashlight and I was looking for the tool and he, being the brilliant young man that he is, he calls me Boppy. He said, Boppy, I got this. And he hit the garage door opener and it came up. And all the sunlight flew into the garage. And he said, look, so you don't need that flashlight. There's so much sunlight, you can see everything in here. So I just stepped back and I was just so proud of him for being so brilliant. Then all of a sudden, I noticed that he couldn't find the tool. And then I took the flashlight, I turned it on, and I pointed it under the car, and I found the tool. And I said to him, no matter how bright the sunlight, the flashlight still has a purpose. So you guys to do me a favor right now. I want everybody to take out their phones. It's OK. You won't get in trouble. Well, you may get in trouble, but it's not my fault. <laughs> now, you guys are going to do something the favor that I asked you guys to do. Now, this is going to be pretty awesome. I'm going to ask you guys on the count of three to take a selfie. Now, my little niece kind of hit me to the game of selfies. She let me know that when I say you're going to take one, she uh, thinks one means the right one. No, you're just going to take one. And she also let me know that all selfies have to be done with the duck lips. So if you have to do a duck lip, just understand somebody's going to be looking at you when you do your duck lips, just letting you know. All right, so on the count of three, you're going to take this selfie. Now be ready now. You're only going to take one. Be ready. One, two, three. So now something amazing just happened. You may not have caught on to it. Something really brilliant just happened. Some of you took that picture, and the first thing you did, once that picture was taken, no matter what I was going to say, you looked down at that photo, and looked at yourself. Am I, evidently, I'm right. You just looked at yourself. And you know something amazing? When you look at that selfie, there are other people in the background. There are other things, there are chairs, there's other things in the background, but none of that mattered. Only thing that mattered was you and how you look, how you perceived yourself. Was my smile right? Did I have something in my teeth? Was my eyebrows together? What? But that's all that mattered. Where am I going? I want you to understand that in your life, many times we're so, we're so caught on somebody else's shine, what somebody else can do, what resources they have, how they were born, whatever they have. We use that to tell ourselves that that's why we can't be great. That's why we can't get to where we want to go, because this person here has it already. Never realizing that in that same photo, that you just took, 
There are people behind you that may be millionaires, maybe straight A students, maybe people that can give you jobs, maybe people that can take away jobs, but none of that matters. Only thing that matters is what you had, what you looked like in that moment. So I need you to do me another favor. When you look at that photo, I want you to say to yourself that that is the power that I have to be able to remind myself that it doesn't matter what anybody else has. It doesn't matter how special they are, it doesn't negate the fact that I too am special. No one on this earth is qualified, again, to tell you how awesome you are. And if you do need somebody to tell you how awesome you are, I'll do it. You're awesome. But you have to believe it, because that is the power that you own. The moment that you give that power to somebody else and hope that they, they'll tell you you're beautiful every day, they'll tell you that you're special every day, you hope that that one person's going to do it, or a group of people are going to do it. The moment that they stop doing it, guess what happens? Now it's a null and void feeling that you have. But if you hold on to that power and recognize the power of you, every selfie you're going to take is going to change. Because it's never going to matter about the person in the background or what's going on in the background. It's just going to matter how special you are, how special you look, how amazing your smile is. Because at the end of the day, you own your future, you own your destiny, and you own how great you're going to be. And if you need somebody, to, again, to tell you if you meet your requirements, it's okay, I'll tell you, you do. Once again, my name is Devin T. Robinson X, also known as Egypt. It's been my pleasure, thank you.